Hey, Kenny. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. How was your week? Exhausting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is that? I'm sorry. School. Yeah. Uh, some work. A lot of missing assignments and stuff to do. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Well, we're getting towards the end, I guess, right? Yeah. End of the year. Getting there. Well, it's, it's March when? Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, March. So when, when's, um, when's your spring break? You can turn down the volume if you want. Um, I think it's March. Um, start March 11th, maybe. That's right. I think I remember seeing that. So. March 15th, somewhere around there. Well, hopefully, you'll get a nice rest then, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So um, let's see. Um, what's going on in math? Are you, are you feeling better from last week? I meant to check with you on that too. Sorry about that. Sorry you weren't feeling well. Yeah, I had a headache that night. I went yeah. Uh, Were you able to go to school? Uh, yeah, I was able to go to school the next day. I woke up fine. That's good. Then the rest did you good. That's good. All right. Well, um, you want to take a look at the at your math stuff that you got going. Sure. Okay. Um, is there uh, is there some homework or um, you know review or notes or something that you didn't quite understand? Um. Try and pull it out here real quick. No problem. So last unit, I had the test, um, but it didn't do so well on the test. I haven't got my um, grade back, but um, pretty there were a few questions that I didn't quite get a final answer to. Okay. So like. Um, the last chapter was uh, inverses and piecewise functions. I see. It was um, mostly just inverses and then a little bit of interest rate too. Oh, that's interesting. That yeah. would all that would go together there. Okay. All right. Um, so you don't have any. Um, let's see. So you don't. I, I think maybe. When was the test now? I think it was. Like, Mm, I don't think it was the week before last week, I believe. Okay. You still don't have it back. Well, I think yeah. maybe right now we should make sure that you're okay with the current material. Okay. Um, and then you were going to send me, did you send me PDFs of your, those uh, tests that you're going to do the, um, uh, the retakes on from last semester? Uh, I'm not sure if I did or not. I don't, I was just looking through my stuff. I don't think so. 
Okay. I see if I can um, pull it out now and see, see if I can send it to you if you want. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. And uh, you also learned the reviews, right? Um, yeah, yeah, right. that would be good, yes. Also, I have um, group activities for some of those that we usually do, like right before the test. If you want me to also send me those for the retake uh, for the test I'm going to retake. Sure, I think so. I think that's a good idea. Are you like um, taking pictures or making PDFs or something like that? Uh, right now, I'm um, getting them all together. Them all, and then I'm. Okay. Gonna Take pictures of the All right, that's cool. Of, um, think missing one. I think one of my um, one of the tests was an online test, so I don't have. Yeah, I got that. Uh -huh. I got that. Okay. Well, maybe we can get to the book and just see some of the content or something when we get a chance. Yeah. That's cool. <clears throat>
So uh, today we could probably start off with um, chapter three. That's um, the first test that I need to retake. Okay. And are you, um, I can't remember if you have my email or not. Uh, I think I do. Okay. Cool. Hmm. Trying to figure out how to add it to email. Um, can you uh, either email from your phone or um, airdrop it to your laptop or to your mom's laptop? Trying to do it from my phone. Okay. Oh, you want to text it to me? Uh, let me try and figure, uh, try okay. it out the email first. Okay.
Oh, I think I should have the chapter three review and test sent over. Okay. Math track tutoring. Yep. Okay. Come on, internet. Yep, came through. Okay, so let me download that. Let me download this and open it up. Okay. All right. So I think we'll take a look at the, the test first. Okay. okay. So let's see. We need to go back here and share the screen. Okay. Can you see the screen okay? Or the whiteboard, yeah. I should say? Yeah, I can see it. All right. And now let me just get the stuff on it here. All right, so I'm looking at number one. Looks like you did okay. And then um, looks like we had trouble with number two. Is that right? Yep. Okay, so um, how, how are we doing as far as remembering any of this? Been a little while. Yeah, this is um thing second like the beginning of second quarter, so this would have been uh okay. Ago. All right, so if um we have zeros of a function, then we know that um the factor, a factor of a function is x minus all of the zeros. So that means that um, since there's a zero at x equals negative four, so zero at x equals negative four means that x minus negative four is a factor of the polynomial. Does that ring a bell? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. And then if um, there's a zero at x doo, 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 equals three i, then x minus three i is a factor, right? Hmm. And x plus 3i is a factor as complex factors come in pairs. Are you okay with that? Um, yeah. Okay, so anytime it's even if this was negative three i, it would also be plus three i. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So then an equation for a third degree polynomial would just be the product of all these factors. So then we could take um, x minus a negative four, and I'm going step by step multiplied by x minus 3i multiplied by x plus 3i. How are we doing on that? 
And it actually looks like you have that there. Um, let me check. Yeah. You have a you have a semblance of that for sure. Well, that's what the teacher wrote down. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Pen, yeah. Okay, I got you. But does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we're going to multiply this nonsense. Um, I'll make x minus negative four x plus four. X minus three i x plus three i. So Kenny, make sure you, <clears throat> you tell me to slow down if I'm going too fast. Uh -huh. um, th this lesson is being recorded and I'll post it later um, uh, on my YouTube channel. So you can look uh -huh. at it if you need to. And also everything that I write here is being sent to you. I think I sent you stuff last time too. So, um, okay. So um, over here, I'm just going to say, ask if you recall that anything in the form a minus b a plus b we can expand to a squared minus b squared okay do you um do you remember that or no uh i don't think i remember that but... okay um well I'm going to leave that alone and I'm just going to show it to you here why that works. Okay. And the reason I bring it up is x minus 3i times x plus 3i is of the form a squared minus b squared, or I'm sorry, a minus b, a plus b. Right. So I'm just going to leave x plus 4 alone to start. And I'm not going to plug it in here. I'm going to foil it just so you can see. So that would be x squared plus 3ix minus 3ix um, minus three i squared. And are you, are you on board with that horrificness? Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's what happens when you have A plus B times A minus B. The middle terms cancel out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's nice to have that shortcut in your back pocket. Because then you can immediately um, X squared, right? X squared um, minus... Um, 3i squared, which is 9i squared. Is that okay? Mm. And what is i squared equal to? Uh, it was it negative one? There you go. Because i is the square root of negative one. So this becomes x squared minus nine times negative one. Now I, I write out all the steps and maybe you're able to say, okay, well, negative nine times a negative one is plus nine, but I'll write out all the steps for you just in case. So that becomes plus nine. And so then we're gonna FOIL again. cube plus 9x plus 4x squared plus 36. And then we would just write it in decreasing order of powers. Are you um, are you taking notes as we go, or are you um, watching and making sure you understand? Uh, I'm watching and looking at my work and seeing 
just where I don't know. Okay. Because a lot of times when I take notes, I, I don't, I, I'm not really paying attention to what I'm taking note of. So it's either one or the other for me. I, I agree. <laughs> me too. I'm, I'm the same way. So, and you're going to get these notes. So I just ask because I don't want to move too fast or too slow or whatever. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Does this, is this okay with you? Yeah. Okay, so it's a third degree polynomial. It might not be the polynomial because it could be a multiple of that or with different coefficients or whatever, but it is it is a possible polynomial um, with these roots. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and he, it looks like your teacher wrote SOAP. Is that an abbreviation for something? Uh, yeah. Do you remember? I just haven't seen it. I'm curious. Uh, I only remember the first two. I don't remember the second two. I know the first S and O stand for same and opposite. So I don't remember what the A and the P stands for. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Okay. And so then the next one. Um, let me get that on there. Where are we at? No, not that one, this one. Okay. All right, so factor this awesome thing. And unfortunately, this is really just to remember, uh, being able to remember the formulas. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm out my window and this cat was prowling and just missed a dove. Good. <laughs> I didn't want to see the cat eat the bird while we're tutoring. Gross and sad. <laughs> All right, so here's A cubed minus B cubed. And then here is. Um, a cubed plus B cubed, hold on. They don't have it nice like this. Now I'll do it this way. I don't wanna go searching again. So once I get them both up there, then you can kind of see the pattern. Yeah. It's kind of weird because um, like on the subtraction one, right? They all start off with the same sign, but then uh, on the second part, the quadratic, they're all positive. And then when you have the sum of two cubes in the quadratic, the first, you know, the, the first sign there is negative. So it's just a little weird. Um, so I guess, um, you know, it's, it's important to know those, unfortunately, there's no other way to, um, to factor those. Okay. So, um, do you know, do you know your perfect cubes? Like, do you recognize, uh, immediately 125 and 27 as perfect cubes? Uh, yeah. Sort of. Okay. Okay. So um, your perfect cubes, mm -hmm. you really need to know through five cubed. One cubed is never any help, but I always list it. And then <laughs> two cubed is eight. Three times three times three, 27. Four times four times four, 64. And then five cubed is 125. And these are the guys, these four are the guys that come up all the time. So mm -hmm. as you're going through, as you're progressing through mathematics, these guys just pop up a lot in different areas. And a lot of the time they pop up because they're perfect cubes. And then you're able to do something with them because they are perfect cubes. Yeah. Okay. 
So it's important that you're used to them. And of course, 64 is also a perfect square. Um, you should know your perfect squares, certainly through 12 squared. And then there's some yeah. almost all the way through 25 squared. There's some ones uh, through 25 squared that come up quite a bit. Okay, so we got our perfect cubes here, right? So 125 X cubed minus 27. Uh, y cubed, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is the same as 5x, the whole thing cubed, minus 3y, the whole thing cubed. Is that all right with you? Yep. All right. So then we're just, we're just plugging in this formula right here. So that would turn into, um, just to be clear, our a is 5x and our B is three Y. Hmm. So we're just gonna be following the pattern, which would be, so we're looking at that guy. So five X minus three Y multiplied by five X quantity squared plus five X times three Y plus three Y squared. And we clean it up or maybe you're able to do that in your head, which is great. If not, great, doesn't really matter. 25X squared plus 15XY plus 9Y squared. What do you think? Okay. So obviously make sure you know those. Okay, and then four, I might need some help. Um, it's a little blurry. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on, but uh, I'm not sure. Find the zeros, zeros. Yeah. of g of x using factoring by grouping, describe the end behavior and roughly sketch the graph below. All right, so um, g of x, is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. Um, so any idea what yeah. um, what they mean by factoring by grouping? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I forgot from the... That's chart. all right. So anytime you have a cubic, and you need to factor it. You always, um, you know, and it's a classic cubic where there's a constant there and the constant being minus eight. Um, if the constant wasn't there, you could factor out an X from each term, right? But it's there, so that's not gonna help us. But what you can do is look at the first two and then look at the second two individually. So in the first two, they have an X squared in common. Is that okay with you? Yep. And then we're left, what are we left with if I factor out an X squared? X plus two. There you go, good. And then um, we look at the last two, do they have anything in common? Yes. What would that be? Negative four. Good. And what are we left with? X minus two. Uh, X plus two, because negative four, positive two, negative eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So if a cubic is factorable, this will always, always, always happen that this guy and this guy are the same. If it's not factorable, it won't happen, okay? So what it boils down to is we now have two terms, two sort of nasty terms, but two different terms, and they have X plus two in common, which means I can factor it out. And what's left? X squared minus four.
Are we okay with that? Yep. Okay. Now, this is where my little hint from last time is going to come into play again, except we're looking at it a different way. X squared minus four is in the form of A squared minus B squared, which I can always factor into A plus B multiplied by A minus B. Because four is a perfect square, right? I could write it as two squared. Yeah. So now X plus two comes straight down and then X squared minus four would be X plus two multiplied by X minus two. Okay. So, um, end behavior is where the heck is the graph going as X gets larger and larger and larger and larger to positive infinity and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller to negative infinity. Where is the, where the heck is the graph going? And when we're talking about infinity, the greatest power, the term with the greatest power is driving the bus. Okay. Because if I have, you know, like if uh, comparing like X cubed to X squared, if I just started with 10, like 10 cubed, 10 cubed is a thousand and 10 squared is a hundred, right? Yeah. And then 10 to the, uh, 10 to the fourth power though, um, I'm sorry, not 10 to the fourth power. Um, if I did 100 cubed, that's 100 times 100 times 100. All of a sudden, I have six, six zeros. I'm up to a million. While um, 100 squared is only four zeros. So I went from three zeros compared to two zeros to six zeros compared to four zeros. And so as X gets infinitely large, the squared, the 4x, and the minus 8 are insignificant, okay? So as x is getting um, larger and larger and larger with positive numbers, any positive number is cubed, then the function is just like, I, it looks like his drawings here. It's uh, going to like, positive infinity, right? Oh, uh, those are my drawings that I did. Oh, good. Know. That wasn't. Okay. Uh, I knew the end behavior, but I didn't know the graph. So I just okay. marked that to go back. Oh, to fabulous. Listen, if you know something and I'm yammering on, you got to go, hey, Dave, I got it. <laughs> I, mean, right. I know it's kind of hard to interrupt an adult and maybe even a, a quote unquote teacher, but you are my boss, okay? Uh, All right, so yeah, yeah, I got that. And then, you know, we'll move on. Okay, so um, then the problem is the rest of the graphs or the rest of the graph, okay? So, um, here we have g of x equal to, to this, right? Yeah. From this, what are the zeros of the function? Uh, I think you froze. What is what are the zeros of the function? Oh, sorry, you froze for a second. Okay, hold on. Am I back? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All right. So if g of x, yeah, if g of x equals all of these guys being multiplied, do you know what the zeros of the function are? Yeah. What are they? It would be negative two, negative two, and plus two. Yeah. So just negative two and two, right? Yeah. That meaning the graph is going to cross the x-axis at negative two, one, two, or touch it. We'll talk about that in a second. And at positive two, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that a cubic generally looks something like this. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, we also, whenever possible, we can find the y-intercept, but just by letting x be zero 
and the y-intercept is at negative eight. This is that your point, right down there. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. So we know this shape. Um, this is a the 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 negative two is a double root, which tells us that it just touches the um, x-axis. It's going to come down here and then go up like that. So you crank in your zeros, a y-intercept if you can. Remember, if you have a double root, it's just going to touch the x-axis. Um, and off you go. Make sense? Yep. OK. Um, use the rational zero theorem. And then that was here. on the uh, early start. What so does that I, mean? That, yeah. that means I uh, I went in early to start the test. I see. So I think I have that on a, another page of the PDF. Oh, okay. Oh, that has your work on it. Yep. I see. Do you remember the rational zero theorem? Uh, I don't think so. All right, we'll no. talk about that. Yeah, I don't see this. Let me look again. I see the end behavior one. I think it's the first page of the PDF I sent, I think. First page? Yeah, I think so. Of the other PDF? Uh, should be. No, not the, the, the test. The test PDF yeah, should be on the first page. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I see it. My bad. My bad. My bad. Okay. All right. So the rational root theorem says if you divide, um, like if I thought, I don't know, um, let's say I thought two was a factor of this. If I took um, x minus two, and divided it into 4x cubed plus 7x squared plus 16x plus 12. Okay, and this is if positive two, um, yeah, if x minus two is a factor, the, remain the remainder would be zero if I did this horrible long division. But the quicker way to do that is to use synthetic division. Okay, but we have to we have to use the zeros. We have to use the zeros of the function. So I'm gonna I'm gonna since I know an answer already, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make that x plus two, right? So if remainder is zero. then negative two is a zero, which is what they're asking for, okay? All right, so um, I'm gonna try, let's try two. Um, and why would I try two? I should have started, uh, before I said that, I should have started with that, okay? And that's just plain old x to the fourth, right? Possible zeros. Are. Plus.
plus or minus P over Q, where P is the constant and Q is the coefficient of the leading term. Do you know what I mean by leading term? Uh, yeah. So in this case, it's one, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I have it more eloquently written. And do you remember synthetic division by any chance? Uh, I don't remember um, anymore. But I think it'll. I think it'll come right back to you. Yeah. So, um, just want to make sure. P over Q. Sorry, Kenny, I'm just looking at something real quick. Okay, I was just checking something. Okay, so it's plus or minus P over Q and that's um, I should put in all the factors here. That's really important of uh, plus or minus P over Q. So P, right, the factors are um, plus or minus one, plus or minus two. This is, uh, my P is 12, plus or minus um, three. There's a lot of them, plus or minus four, uh, plus or minus, what, six, and plus or minus 12, right? And we're lucky because since Q equals plus or minus one, we don't have to, like if this were plus or minus two, we would have to put every one of these over two, both mm -hmm. plus or minus, and that's just a huge pain. But since it's one, then I only have to consider the one, two, three, four, five, uh, one, two, three, four, six, 12 as possible factors. Um, but I'm cheating. I know that two is a factor. So, or two is a zero, I should say. So I'm gonna, um, to do synthetic division, I'm gonna put that two here and then the coefficients in decreasing order would be one, four, seven, 16 and 12, right? So do you see where I got these guys? Yeah. Okay. So to divide, um, synthetically, you just bring down the first coefficient, one. And then you go 
two, you take um, uh, the divisor, the two, two times one is two, and you put it underneath the next term, the next number. Mm -hmm. And then you subtract. Four minus two is two. And then we get, we just, we keep going. Two times two is four. Seven minus four is three. Two times three is uh, six. 16 minus six is 10. And I thought zero was gonna be a factor. I'm, you don't subtract, I'm, I was, I was getting, get, get, I, I'm sorry. I got it confused with another. Um, another procedure, we actually add them and I could barely, let's see, is this, these are all pluses, right? Yeah. Or is that a minus X? Uh, no, but okay. uh, it's, it's thing, a different question. It's a different question. Yeah, it's different on the uh, start early than it is on the actual test. Is why Got I, it. Why it's Got something it. I just noticed. So. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so we add them. So you bring down the one, two times one is two, four plus two is six. So let me um, erase these guys. Two times six is 12, seven plus 12 is 19. Two times 19 is 38, uh, four, 54, I think, yeah, 54. And then 108, and this becomes 120. So if this were a zero, then the remainder would be zero, but it's not. So two is not, a factor or a zero okay so two is no good so let's try negative two so again we start over one four seven sixteen twelve and this is uh much um much quicker than doing long division by polynomials okay so we bring down the one Two, four, negative two is two. Negative two times two is negative four. Seven minus four is uh, three. Negative six. We get 10, negative 20, and we get negative eight. So this doesn't work. So this is no good. This is no good. So now I'm really going to cheat. And I'm going to, well, no, we'll stumble across one. Actually, let me grab it. Okay, so 4x cubed. plus 7x squared plus 16x plus 12. So negative one is, a, uh, we'll get at least one in here. So negative one is going to work and I'll show you why here. So I'm gonna try negative one. One, four, seven, 16, 12. I'm gonna net my, I'm gonna let my next student in, Kenny, and um, just so she doesn't think I forgot her. Okay. So I bring down the one, right? And then, hey, Samia. I don't know where she went. Okay. So then what happens? I'm sorry. Uh, then what happens, Kenny? Uh, then we 
um, bring it up to a um, bring it up to a two uh, negative two, right? Negative one. Negative one oh. times one is negative one. Yeah. Just a silly error, no big deal. And then uh, we combine four negative one to get three. Then what? What goes here? Uh, negative three. Good. And what goes down here? Uh, would it be a four? Four? Yep. Four. Good. Now what? Uh, negative four. Good. And what do we get here? Uh, 12. Excellent. And then negative 12 and zero. Yay. Boom. So negative one is a zero, which is what we were looking for. Okay, so that's what the question asks, find all the zeros. But also, I'm just going to say note, this means x plus 1 is a factor of the polynomial. Right, because to get the 0, of negative one, you would have to solve x plus one equals zero and get x equals negative one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and before I let you go, Samia, are you there? Okay, before I let you go, right? These are now the new coefficients that we're going to use. Um, because we now know that, um, let's see, x to the fourth well, she laughed, she was scared. Um, x to the fourth plus four x cubed plus seven x squared plus sixteen x plus twelve is equal to this factor times, I have my new coefficients here. And they become one X cubed. So I decrease my uh, greatest power by one plus three X squared plus four X plus the constant 12. And that's, that's not part of the solution, but it's really uh, what they're asking, but it's really, really important, okay? So I'm just putting this in a little box for you as a bit of a recall thing. Does that ring a bell at all? Uh, a little bit. Okay. So the upshot is, that our new synthetic division is, you know, whatever we decide, we now use the one, three, four, and 12 as our new coefficients to keep going to find more zeros. All right. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm just going to look out here real quick. I think we had, we don't have any more real zeros. So I'm going to have to leave it at that because I got another student, Kenny. All right. But um, we will pick this back up next Sunday. Is that okay? All right.
All right. All right. See you. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Bye.